Hello, and welcome back to Heroic Journeys, leveling up with Chantel and Tamara. <laughs> Today we're going to give you a map for leveling up, something that has been a real uh, guidance for us over the years. But first, uh, as promised in the last episode, we want to do a little bit of an introduction for those of you who are new to us and, and talk a little bit about why we have a passion for doing this podcast. <laughs> Okay, well, um, long story short about me, I was born in Winnipeg and grew up in Alberta, moved back to Manitoba as a teenager. Um, I'll share more of my story later on as we talk about the hero's journey. Um, I have three kids who are, my youngest is 16, oldest two are in their 20s, and yeah, that's a little blurb about me. <laughs> and I'm Tamara, I'm an educator. Uh, we both live in southern Manitoba. I grew up in Saskatchewan and at age 13 moved to southern Manitoba, which was a huge, tremendous culture shock for me. I grew up in a Mennonite family. My father was a pastor, um, had a wonderful childhood and upbringing, but moving to southern Manitoba was tremendously difficult for me because uh, I've always had a real need for spiritual depth and, and a framework that is large and expansive. And so living in a, a culture with strong overtones of fundamentalism was really difficult for me to the point where I lost my singing voice at the end of high school. And to me, that was a real metaphor for losing my song and my ability to speak and sing my truth. And so I've been on a quest to reclaim my voice ever since. And this podcast is part of that and, and also as a way of uh, expressing the things that are really important and deep to me. Yeah. So. <laughs> Which brings us to our topic for today. We, we introduced in the last episode the idea of leveling up and how at this time in our human history, this is a, an imperative for all of us. And so we wanted to give a map and a framework that's been very useful for us and, and that I see popping up again and again. So we talked, Chantal, a little bit about um, metaphors and analogies for leveling up, and you had some really interesting ones that are... Well, the one that I use the most is this Mario Bros, you know, where you, you have like these different caves you can go down into or these different things you can do, and then you, you just find ways past the challenges, and then once you figure it out, you can level up. And so I feel like we do that in life. Yeah, I mean, that's a great example of how art imitates life. And often art, as, when it's imitating life, um, gives us metaphors and ideas for our next step in the human journey. We talked, too, about the spiral staircase and this idea of spiraling up. And, and, you know, you go through life and sometimes you feel like you're facing the same issues again and again. But really, each time, there's kind of a new twist to it because you've, advanced a little more you've matured or you've grown in some way and so that spiraling journey just continues and continues yeah because we have more resources it's like that one quote uh, that i sent to you <laughs> what was it about the river um did you the oh yeah yeah no <laughs> man ever steps in the same river twice for it's not the same river and it's not the same person yeah and that's heraclitus so that's gone <laughs> from ancient times yeah so I figure like, you know, the spiral staircase or this, as we come around and learn the same lesson again, we have more resources to, to go deeper, to, to level up, <laughs> whichever metaphor you prefer. Yeah. And it's kind of funny how life shifts us like individually, but also collectively, you know, it's almost like there's a point at which life says, or the universe or whatever you want to call it says that oh, they're ready for the next step. And so uh, I guess you could look at COVID that way, mm -hmm. you know, that was um, kind of our testing ground for the readiness to move into some new phase of our uh, human experience. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to talk today about the Hero's Journey Framework, which has been uh, enormous for both of us in terms of our life and growth. Uh, for me, it helped me get through a cancer journey which I wrote all about in my blog and there will be a link um, that you can go and find afterwards below in the, in the, in the uh, information box. Um, but this is something I discovered uh, probably 15-20 years ago 
Joseph Campbell and the hero's journey. And if you're not familiar with Joseph Campbell, he was a mythologist who uh, was fascinated with mythologies from all different cult cultures around the world. And what he found as he explored and read massive amounts of literature from different cultures was that there was sort of one pattern, one framework, he called it the monomyth, that is found in all of them. And it, he named it the hero's journey, and I like to call it the heroic journey because that's a little more gender neutral. Um, but this idea of uh, this hero's journey is something that we all go on. Uh, we go on through the trajectory of our lives. Uh, we can go on through different experiences in our lives. And even in a day, you can have a hero's journey. And so on multiple levels, we're living this hero's journey. Um, and Joseph Campbell wrote and talked uh, much about it in his life. And George Lucas, who created Star Wars, was someone who read Joseph Campbell's work. And he created the Star Wars uh, movies based on the hero's journey. So if you're a fan of Star Wars, as we go through the stages, you may recognize them in Star Wars. I always think of the Lord of the Rings whenever anyone says the hero's journey. And like, I don't even think we've ever had a conversation where the hero's journey hasn't been mentioned. Right. Oh, <laughs> like, true it's enough, just yeah. <laughs> so a part of life. Or Lord of the Rings, because I'm such a nerd about that. <laughs> so we will bring in Lord of the Rings as we're going through the stages. And uh, Chantel's gonna share from real life, some of the examples of how those different stages have played out for her. Mm -hmm. So let's take it away. Just dive in to stage one. Stage one of the heroic journey is ordinary life. We're living our ordinary life, operating by our status quo, but it's become too small for us. So it can look like victimhood, um, dissatisfaction, complacency, what it looked like for me. Um, I guess at the beginning of my hero's journey, <laughs> I'm the oldest of 10 kids. I was homeschooled in a strict religion. And um, yeah, I, I was really in victimhood a lot of the time, <laughs> kind of like surviving my life. So in Lord of the Rings, uh, to take a movie example, we have Frodo living his ordinary life, which is in the Shire, a life of innocence and uneventfulness and he's just um, walking <laughs> out in the fields and reading books under the trees and it's it's a it's a sweet life but it's not a life that is gonna create a hero mm -hmm. so then goes on to stage two the call to adventure um, since we're not stepping up to the plate life sends us a call to adventure something that shakes up our status quo and asks us to step into the path of adventure so for me um, the kind of earthquakes that shook up my life one of them was that my parents changed religions about 13 years ago and that kind of um, did a number to my identity as my siblings and I kind of just <laughs> scattered and found our own way and didn't have that closeness that we had growing up. Um, and my siblings died shortly after that too. And it was just like a lot of loss, a lot of, a lot of grief, a big call to adventure, mm -hmm. uh, but I didn't see it like that at the time. <laughs> no, and that's typical. We don't usually, right? Yeah. Yeah, in Lord of the Rings, the call to adventure comes with Bilbo's birthday party. And at the uh, height of the celebration, he um, gets up to make a speech and puts on the ring on his finger and disappears. And, and then he leaves the ring behind at Bag End for Frodo to find. And so the ring showing up in his life is what sets, starts Frodo on his whole epic adventure. Mm -hmm. And then on to stage three, the refusal of the call. We usually do not welcome the unexpected and try to refuse the call or someone tries to refuse it for us can look like turning down an opportunity or sabotaging ourselves, but the call keeps coming until we have no choice but to accept it. And so, yeah, in my journey of loss and grief, I had a lot of resistance, a lot of like, I, I know I've always been accepting of my friends, cultures and religions. And uh, I just found that my parents changing religions was just a totally different animal. <laughs> and so a lot of resistance came before the acceptance, for sure. You know, I think a lot of resistance comes from our belief systems, right? Mm -hmm. Haven't we read many times that science shows that having our beliefs challenged affects our brain and our physicality in the same way as if we were being attacked yeah. by a, a, a lion wild animal, or something? Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, and in the Lord of the Rings, um, the resistance or the refusal to the call comes with like Frodo just putting the ring away in an envelope and sealing it with some wax and, you know, hiding in a chest or something somewhere. And hopefully that's the end of it, right? He's out of sight, out of mind. We, we, we tend to rationalize things away or, you know, put it in a box and it means I don't have yeah. to deal with it. We all do that at some time. <laughs> It's kind of like, you know, there's a dragon in the cave, but we run away from it or pretend it's not yes. there, hoping that it'll just take care of itself on the its own. The dragon is sleeping, so let's yeah. just pretend it's not there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, on to stage four. The wise guide shows up. So this could be a person, a book, an animal ally, like our own inner guidance, just anything that will give us a higher perspective. And the wise guide helps us accept the call to adventure arms us with good advice and tools to help us on our journey. And so for me, that came in the form of the elephant journal on, <laughs> I discovered it on Facebook and man, did I read those articles. It introduced me to mindfulness for the first time and meditation, what it really meant versus the, the meaning that I had growing up of what meditation meant. And it just helped me so much to view my thoughts not as myself it helped me to lose the guilt that i felt for feeling mm. feel or like thinking a bad thought mm. and that was so big for me and it, it helped me a lot in my grief process too to be able to um separate a lot of my yeah to, yeah. to be able to just have some awareness about me yeah versus being caught up in you know, when we talk about parts therapy in the past, it's like I had totally identified with those parts, but now I could see them as separate from me. You know, I what you're saying makes me think one of the real important functions of a wise guide is to help us step away from ourselves so we can actually view things from a higher or a larger perspective. Mm -hmm. So I think for a lot of us, wise guides show up in the form of books mm -hmm. or online communities mm -hmm. or uh, courses or... Mm -hmm. um, for Frodo, of course, the wise guy is Gandalf, um, who shows up at crucial moments throughout the Lord of the Rings trilogy. And, and um, the important thing about a wise guide is they'll never do anything for you that you can do for yourself. So, you know, there are times when you feel abandoned maybe by your wise guide or um, where's Gandalf when we need him. But really, the hero's journey is meant to grow us into heroes. And so... There are times when um, somebody can't do things for us. Yeah, the wise guide is literally a guide. It's not someone who is, you know, you're going to be right. codependent with. like. <laughs> right? Yeah. And as parents, it's really easy to fall into that helicopter parenting trap because you want to be the wise guide for your student but, or for your yeah. child. But that doesn't mean that you do things for them. Mm -hmm. It means that you give ask them tools. The, ask and, the right questions. Yeah, and, and actually sometimes push them. Which takes us actually to the next stage. <laughs> yeah, the next stage is stage five, crossing the threshold. This is the moment where we leave our familiar life and step into the new world of adventure, the point of no return. Things are usually different in this new world, different rules, things work differently, etc. So for me, this looked like leaving the church, leaving religion, and actually leaving my marriage. <laughs> so I was starting to think for myself and choose myself and yeah those was... are a lot of thresholds <laughs> I, it in felt a short like time. It, it felt <laughs> like it it felt like i was creating a whole new identity for myself to be honest so when you yeah. leave your your family identity and your religion you you have to really decide what you believe and i think that's part of the reluctance to accept the call the refusal right because something in us knows if i accept this call if i go on this adventure I will change and that will change how everyone sees me. It will change my relationships. Um, Coming out of the closet in yeah. any way is... Yeah. <laughs> and the thing about refusing the call is that uh, you can think you're refusing it, but it will come back again and again and again, you know. And so for Frodo, that ring showed up, he hid it away. And then all of a sudden, um, the Black Riders are showing up in the Shire looking for the ring and there it is right back in his life. And so that call will keep coming. I know somebody that had um, a little fender bender and then a couple months later had a bigger fender bender and then a few months later than that had a, an actual accident. And these are the kind of things where you sort of say, what, what am I being called to notice? Is there something I should be paying attention to? 
And yeah, that's kind of the difference between the victim mentality and the hero mentality. You know, the victim mentality is why me? Why is this happening to me? Yeah. And the hero mentality is what can I learn from this? Right. And and for a person like that, the message may be you need to make time for more sleep or, you know, there's too much going on in your life. You're distracted, that kind of thing. Like we... Um, we get these calls and we rationalize them away because we're so stuck in our left brains looking for logical reasons where the right brain would have the bigger picture and if we just kind of drop into life as metaphor life is a hero's journey these stages can help us really notice what's going on and, and have some deeper awareness yeah and it really helped me too to not feel like I'm supposed to be happy all the time like you know <laughs> that every movie we watch has both good and bad you know that yeah. it, it all is allowed to be accepting that was a big thing a big step from victim to hero and I mean I still yeah. fall into victim <laughs> here here and you know now and again but but once you have the framework, yeah, <laughs> you then, can pull yourself out yeah, exactly. more easily, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And for Frodo, crossing the threshold was leaving the Shire. And if you watch the movie, there's a moment where he and Samwise, his trusty sidekick, uh, are they're in a cornfield or something, and Sam stops short and says, and then Frodo looks at him and says, "What is it?" Um, and Sam says, "If I take one, more, this is the furthest away I've ever been. If I take one more step." Um, something about I will be leaving home so it was that idea of going out into the unknown taking that step and I don't know if there's anything we have more fear of than the unknown mm -hmm. and hypnotherapy like when I was introduced to it was kind of like that for me you know because a lot of people have they don't know exactly what it is right and you you kind of have to step over that threshold mm -hmm. and just kind of dive in and be like, oh, that's what it is. You yeah. know, it's not nothing like I knew existed. And we have, you know, without realizing it, because this is the ocean we swim in, we live in this paradigm where certain things are legitimate and other things are not legitimate. And as an educator, I, I know that I have certain conditionings around what is sanctioned, um, and so yeah, what is woo woo? Yeah, what is woo woo? <laughs> so you know, there's still that part of me that has a fear of oh, people are gonna think I'm a complete flake. But <laughs> so be it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right. so, next stage. Yeah, stage six: allies and adversaries. In the new world, we have to discover who our allies are and who will help and support us, and who are our adversaries who might test us to make us grow our strength and help us claim our power. And often those allies can be such a gift, or like both can be a gift. The mm -hmm. allies and the adversaries are such a gift because often you can't discover a, a certain resource until you've had to come up with <laughs> the power to, to deal with a situation like that. I found um, definitely an ally in you. <laughs> I feel like we understand each other and that's been such a gift. And also um, after I left my marriage, I found a, a life partner who was very supportive on my like hypnotherapy journey mm -hmm. and everything and we were able to talk about it and, like talk about it to someone who understood and yeah that's what it looked like for me <laughs> so Joseph Campbell talks about enemies allies and enemies but I like adversaries better because on the grand scheme of things we have no enemies our enemies are our adversaries because they push us to do better to be better to grow tools to grow uh, abilities that we wouldn't be pushed to do otherwise, you know, like the grain of sand in the oyster that makes it form a pearl. Um, so in the Lord of the Rings, of course, Samwise is is Frodo's greatest, most trusted, loyal friend. And then he meets other people who at first might seem like adversaries and turn out to be allies, like uh, Aragorn. And then there are others like Boromir who appear friend-like at first and then um, turn out to be an adversary or, or an enemy. And of course, Gollum kind of walks the line between both. So there is a bit of a blur between these because sometimes uh, the people we think are our allies don't help us out in the way that we really need to. They might actually, you know, sit with us in our grievances and kind of legitimate, legitimate our victimhood by you know giving us reasons to to continue to feel our grievances and not actually step up to the plate and take the hero's journey mm -hmm. so it 
it's really interesting if we're very discerning about like the people enabling. in our life. <laughs> That's enabling. Enablers, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> then uh, different people play these different roles at different times. And so all of us have been an ally at, at some point to someone and all of us have been an adversary. Yeah, like in every story there there is like the bad guy, right? There's the, what do they call it? The villain? <laughs> yeah, the villain. Every yeah. story has a villain. Yeah. But the thing is, like a lot of the times when we get triggered from someone else, it really is a gift to show us where, what we need to heal, what needs to be healed or what yeah. part of ourselves is reacting to that. Because if there wasn't a wounded part of us reacting to it, it wouldn't bother us. You know, like right. if, if I said to you, like, oh, I hate your green hair, like, you'd be like, I don't have green hair, like, you're an idiot, <laughs> right? Like, it, it wouldn't bother you. <laughs> but if there was some part of you said, oh, I do have green hair, you know, like, oh, no, right? right? Then it would be a bit of a trigger. Yeah. And I think if you start looking at every trigger as uh, a call to adventure, right? A mini adventure. Mm-hmm. I have a chance to face this thing that triggers me. Mm-hmm. Then uh, you can look at this framework and take the journey, even with small things like that. Mm-hmm. Although which, a trigger might not be small. Right. <laughs> which leads us to stage seven, which is tests and trials. <laughs> well, we can add triggers to that. <laughs> no Test one, trials and triggers. Yeah. No one gets to be a hero without being tested. We go through a series of challenges that force us to develop new abilities and to grow. So I just look at that in my life as just navigating the, the great changes that comes when you leave your church, your religion, your family, your marriage. There's a lot of things to navigate <laughs> Yeah. So how did it look like in Lord of the Rings? Oh, well, I mean, so many things happened along that big journey from the Shire to uh, Mount Doom. Um, Being captured, uh, they lost uh, Gandalf in the mines of Moria. So battles, facing attacks, um, treachery from a trusted ally when Boromir tried to steal the ring from Frodo. So Frodo was tested in many ways. Um, And you as you watch the movie you can see every time he's in a situation of danger there's that temptation to put on the ring and disappear which which gets stronger and stronger so even just the temptation of the power of the ring is a test that he's constantly facing Hmm. yeah (laughs) and i mean when we go through trials and you know we kind of want to run away (laughs) you know like that's just human nature to be be rescued right exactly like who's gonna come and pull me out of this mess yeah and that's not being the hero right that's looking for the hero um and then on to stage eight the ultimate ordeal this is the big do or die event of the journey the stakes are at their highest and there's a prospect of failure in movies often even death we are tested to our utmost limits often there is a real sense of being alone and abandoned and we face this test alone and to me, like the clear answer to what that was overall in my life was COVID, <laughs> you know, because we all had sort of different beliefs and stances on COVID. And um, even in partnerships and friendships, we had all different ideas of what was right and wrong and who was good and bad. And <laughs> it, it did make a lot of us feel fearful and alone. Mm-hmm. I think COVID presented an ultimate ordeal for a lot of families mm-hmm. and relationships. Yeah, it, that was definitely a tough test for humanity as a whole. It's still ongoing mm-hmm. in some ways. For Frodo, of course, the ultimate test is can he throw the ring into the fire of, at Mount Doom? And you see the struggle that he's in at the end and nearly succumbs to the power of the ring. Um, and then Gollum, who has... We've looked on Gollum as an enemy through the whole movie... He shows up and and acting out of his own desire for the ring, he actually saves Frodo's life by um, taking it from him. So Hmm. that ultimate ordeal is really um, not so much even a physical ordeal, but it really challenges our our deepest beliefs Mm -hmm. about who we are. Yeah. And am I ready to give up my identity? Hmm. Am I ready to... um, give up who I thought I was to become something larger. Yeah. And to me with COVID and I feel like what we'll be facing in the future too, is like the pressure to pick a side. And I, I really like the idea of like, you don't have to pick a side. You only have to have values. You know, you Mm -hmm. don't have to pick left or right necessarily. You just, 
have to choose what you want. Like you have to choose love. Like love can transmute a lot of things. <laughs> yeah, and that really um, points to where we want to go next after this, which is all about getting in touch with our values and our highest intentions and what what it is that we want. Mm -hmm. So where were we in the stages? <laughs> Stage uh, nine. nine, reward. If and when we pass the ultimate ordeal, there's a reward. It can be an outer treasure, something material, or an inner treasure. It's usually inner treasure. <laughs> a new awareness or understanding or a new ability. And definitely I found that I, with every trial and tribulation, with every lesson I learned, it just gave me a new inner resource. And ultimately a new mindset, a new more positive mindset, like that inner critic was quieter and the inner coach was a lot louder. <laughs> <laughs> and for Frodo, um, the reward, of course, is he saved Middle Earth. He saved the Shire, his home that he loves, and all the people that he cares about. Um, but also, if you compare him at the end of the movie to the sort of carefree, uh, youngish, teenagerish person that he was at the beginning, or hobbit that he was, he is there's something deeper about him there's something more mature and wiser and so that's also something he'll bring back to his community mm -hmm. and yeah to ne the next step is stage 10 return we return to our ordinary world although we know things will never be as they were we come back changed and yeah like i said with the resources <laughs> yeah it's kind of like those two steps are, are very close together stage 11 sharing the gift the heroic journey is not over until we share some gift that we have brought back with us to contribute to the greater good. And I feel like this podcast is that for us. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, hypnotherapy is, is kind of like that too. But I also feel like our example or our resonance is what we bring back. Um, I feel like that example and resonance is often more powerful than trying to be the savior <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> like I think a lot of empaths feel the call or whatever to be a savior but at some point they realize that everyone has to save themselves yeah and that all you can do is kind of live your life and if people ask for advice give it or, yeah or help guide them I love that idea of resonance um, that's become a big um, way of how I view the world and interactions between people uh, and I think about um, in The Lord of the Rings, when the hobbits all return to the Shire, they left on foot and they're coming back on horses and they've got um, their elven robes on them and there's just something a little princely about them. And so they're coming back with a different vibe. And the, the people of the Shire kind of look at them a little suspiciously, you know, are, are these our boys that we, <laughs> you know, we knew how they used to get in mischief and... Here they are coming back looking like princes, like what's going on. And, and you can just kind of see the twinkle in, in the hobbit's eyes as they're noticing how people are reacting to them differently. Yeah. And then, yeah, stage 12, ordinary life. Settle back into a rhythm of life. And then the cycle can start over. <laughs> right. Until you're ready to grow again. And uh, another metaphor kind of for this is like the shake, the snake shedding its skin, right? The snake keeps growing and sooner or later that skin is too small. Time for a hero's journey and shedding that skin and growing, expanding into something larger. And like that one book that we talked about a couple of episodes ago, Life is in the Transitions. Like it's, it's kind of like that. Life is in the transitions. I think we've been kind of raised to believe that, you know, we will somehow get to a point where we've got everything figured out. I don't think so. Not going to happen. No. Nope. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully you will be hearing about the hero's journey. I'm sure it will come up many a time in our podcast episodes. And so we wanted to give you that framework. And what we see just observing the world and looking at the larger picture is that Number one, this is a framework that you hear more and more about. The hero's journey is popping up everywhere. Um, and we have also noticed just looking at culture around us, how this idea of becoming a hero and being the hero of your own story is, is becoming an urgent message. If you look at the pro proliferation of superhero movies, like there's just been in the Marvel franchise alone, I don't know how many movies have come out in the last... 10, 15 years, um, superhero movies. And 
you know, there'll be one superhero franchise, um, Spider-Man or whatever, and then all of a sudden these superheroes are coming together and forming alliances. And um, so it just feels like life is giving us that message. It's time to level up mm -hmm. and become your own hero. Yeah. So. And I'd encourage you, any, any story you read, any movie you watch, to look for these these 12 stages and, and you'll find them. Yeah, it doesn't matter what movie, um, you'll find it. Go watch Mr. Bean's Holiday. <laughs> go and, watch Home Alone. Yeah, and like you can go through the whole stage, all of these stages in one day sometimes. like, And it repeats itself. So yeah, just an, a different perspective on life. Wherever you're at, you're in some stage or other of the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. And so the, the framer can really help you take a step back and be a little more objective and, and actually see that sometimes things that feel really challenging, um, they're actually fuel for your growth. If you can put yourself in a hero mentality and uh, pull yourself out of the victim mentality. Mm -hmm. So that's it for our <laughs> podcast today. Until next time. <laughs> What's our tagline? I can't remember. <laughs> it's be the hero. Of your own story. There we yeah. go.